There we go. <laughs> that was crazy. Okay, I'm waiting for at least one of my moderators to get in here. Hey, free Haley made. I'm going to wait a few minutes, see if we get some more people. Let me move this closer to me. Oh, that's better. I'm trying to get comfortable. I'm not used to sitting up like this. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to give it a couple more minutes and then I'm going to go ahead and get started because I have a lot to cover in a short amount of time. So. If you come in, please, please leave a comment so I know who you are, so I can say hi. And hopefully, Gail will be in here in a minute because she's going to help mod for me. I'm not, I don't have two screens. I can't have both screens up, so I'm operating on from my cell phone and from my Chromebook. So if you see me looking over, it's because I'm checking. Okay. Gail is in the house. Hello, Gail Southern Living. I've got you. Okay. Oh, good. The moderator. Um, um, it saved you as a moderator, so I don't have to. I don't have to set you up as a moderator again. I'm waiting just for a couple more people to come in before I get started. Um, emotional therapy pets is the topic for today, um, especially pertaining to autism, but also um, other neurological, psycho um, psychological conditions. Um, the first thing I'm going to go over is the type of service animals there are. There are three different types. And within autism itself, there are two different types of those three. And I'm going to make sure that I explain the difference between the two because it is a very big difference. So I just want to make sure that you guys understand what the differences are and maybe help you decide, okay, what kind of pet do you want? So, well, it's 105. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, and then if we have, if I have time, I'll open up, I'll open up the live. Hi, Quattro mom. Good to see ya. All right. So, this live came about because of, of two viewers that I had that have been following me um, pretty much regular basis. And they had, they had seen my little short video of our pets explaining that they're more than just pets, that they were emotional support animals. And they wanted some more information. So originally, this was just going to be just a chat day open forum until I got those two questions and I decided, okay, this is a pretty important topic. And so I changed. Hi, Super Penny. Nice to see you, my new friend. I subscribe to your channel, by the way. 
Hopefully it sticks. I watched two full videos to make sure it sticks. Um, and Gail, please feel free to uh, to post channel links as well. Definitely, we're a community, and I don't mind sharing links. Um, Gail Southern Living is my sissy in law, um, and she is one of my mods. And hopefully, um, hopefully, I'll have another um, one of our community come in and be a mod. Hey, Patty. Can you be a moderator and help um, Gail out for me in posting links and whatnot? That would be great. If you can, let me know, and I can I can set you as a moderator real quick. <clears throat> oh, great! You're a lifesaver. <laughs> Oh, good. I wanted at least two. Not that I'm expecting a huge um, audience, but it's just helpful to have two. Wonderful. Okay. All right. So let's get started. There are um, different types of disability pets. And I'm going to break these down for you. Um, there's disability dogs and or pets um, that pertain to service or work. And then the third one is therapy dogs, not to be cute, um, excuse me, not to be confused with, okay, Patty, thanks. Um, not to be confused with emotional support pets. Therapy and emotional support pets are two different categories, and a lot of times they get mixed up. So I'm going to go into that as well to teach you the difference. Because if you're on, if you're an adult and you don't have a pet yet and you want one, it's important that you know the difference. Because depending on what you're needing the animal for is going to depend on what you choose, and not all breeds are good. Just because it's a, a, a disability dog doesn't mean it's a good um, fit for an emotional support dog versus an emotional support dog may not be um, suitable for a work dog so or a work pet. Um, so it just really depends on what the purpose is. So we're going to go over the different types first. So you have your disability pets. Um, most of the pets that are used for service um, and work and therapy are more times than not dogs because they they provide a, a certain function. So um, thank you, uh, Minnie Acres Farm. Good to see you. Um, so disability dogs... And under disability dogs are your service dogs and your therapy dogs, not work dogs. Work dogs are completely different. Um, work dogs are dogs that work with police, um, maybe EMS, maybe, um, uh, uh, what do you call it, search and rescue. Those are work dogs. Those are completely different. So disability dogs are your... Um, your service dogs and your therapy dogs, okay? And what they provide are, um, they provide balance and support for those that have trouble standing or walking. Um, they provide assistance with transfers. So let's say if you're in a wheelchair, um, that service dog or therapy dog can help you get from your wheelchair to a bear or a bed or a chair. Then you also have um, service and therapy dogs that are trained to retrieve things for you. So, um, if you need your clicker, they can go and get your clicker. If you need, I mean, anything, your shoes, they can go and bring you your shoes, things like that. Um, they also have been trained to, um, turn off lights on and off. I thought that was pretty cool. And, um, another thing they're doing too is they're used to alert when a person 
is having a seizure or even if they're going into cardiac arrest. These dogs are trained to sense when that happens and they can alert that person and they can alert somebody else. <clears throat> and then the last thing um, that they're also used for is um, hearing and signaling. Um, they can be the ears and eyes of the disabled person and they can signal. Okay. So they're used as guide dogs, hearing and signal dogs, medical response. And then here comes um, another trait, which kind of goes on both spectrums. So um, psych psychiatric service dogs um, or psychiatric services, those, that particular trait can be found not only in service dogs and um, in therapy dogs, they can, that trait is a trifecta. It can also be in your emotional support dog and very important that your emotional support, I say dog, but emotional support has more than dog and we'll get into that. But that's a very important trait for an emotional support animal. And then also in service therapy and emotional support um, dogs per se, because we're just talking about dogs right now. This trait is also a trifecta, and that's autism assistance support, okay? So those are the service dogs and your therapy dogs. That is um, the difference between those. Emotional support dogs um, are basically what it says, emotional support. And I'm going to get into their characteristics separately here in a few minutes. Hi, Simply Jan. Hi, homesteading in the heartland. Trying to give you guys shout outs as I'm going over this information. All right. So we're going to get into um, specifically autism assistance dogs pertaining to a therapy dog because that's different from autism emotional support. Um, and the difference is therapy dogs are more hands on um, with the physical needs rather than the psych psychology needs of someone on the spectrum. Okay, so an autism assistance therapy dog helps distinguish important sensory signals. So that dog is trained to be able to alert someone if an adult or a child, let's say, is getting overstimulated and close to doing some self-harming behaviors or going into a meltdown, something like that. Um, also, um, they are trained to alert, um, like I said, the repetitive behavior, self-harming, like um, you may have um, an autism child or even adult, older adults, some can can still have this issue where they get overstimulated, they can't handle the environment, they can't handle the overload that's going on, and they may bang their head um, or start scratching at themselves. Whatever is considered self-harming, these type of dogs are trained to be able to alert another person that this is happening and also to alert that child or that person and they're able to help them re-regulate and stop doing that, that self-harming behavior. <clears throat> um, and then also um, autism service and therapy dogs are specifically trained to um, guard a child or adult with severe autism from wandering. Um, and you can have wandering issues even with um those on the higher up on the spectrum. Okay. So wandering is very, really important. Um, I can't tell you how many times and it breaks my heart. I see on the news or in the newspaper, um, somebody went missing and they can't find them. And it's a child or even adult and they wandered off and they don't know how to swim. They fell on a lake pond or when we lived in, um, Cantoma, Florida, uh, we're really close to Pensacola beach. Um, there was a teenager autistic male that wandered off from the home. Um, the home was on the beach and heartbreaking. He had drowned. He wandered into the water um, too far and didn't know how to swim and got hit, got caught in a riptide and drowned. So 
as you can tell, um, service and therapy dogs are definitely trained. Hey, Pete's little homestead. Um, trained for more physical attributes of um, a child or an adult, an adult needing extra support. These um, autism characteristic dogs can also be used for a child that's ADHD because um, ADHD uh, does have um, a wandering off trait or very impulsive um, where like, like Z sometimes, um, well, we don't have that problem now cause we were kind of out here in the middle of the woods, but when we lived in a neighborhood, he would run across the street without even looking, didn't even think, even though he's been taught to look, he just doesn't look. He's gotten a lot better now that he's gotten older, but when he was really little, that was a huge issue for us. All right. So we're going to get into some more, um, traits of the therapy now. Everything I just listed is basically the nuts and bolts of a service um, dog um, for all different types of um, conditions when it comes to medical or psychiatric. All right. Now, therapy dogs are a little different in um, service dogs in that they... Um, they are specifically used in therapy situations. So you'll find them in med medical clinics. You'll find them in hospitals. You'll find them in um, elderly homes, things like that. Um, therapy dogs are dogs that are trained to be around all different types of people. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share the characteristics of what a therapy dog should have to even be allowed to be trained to be a therapy dog and be allowed to even be in any public spaces. So they have to be easy to train, number one. They have to have a calm temperament and they have to be able to be obedient. Um, they have to be unfazed by any unfamiliar noises uh, or movements. So they can't spook easy. <clears throat> they have to be able to be comfortable being handled by anybody, not just by the handler, literally by anybody. Um, they have to have a love for people. They have to be gentle, patient. They need to be very, very intelligent. Um, and that's important because, like I said, these dogs are primarily used in hospital, nursing homes. They're used in certain schools, um, mental health institutions things like that. So that's really, really important. If you see me looking down every once in a while, it's because I've got notes. <laughs> so I don't go off on a tangent because I'm trying to get through this information and then we can open up the chat to whatever we want, questions and what have you. All right. So here's the nuts and bolts of emotional support animals. And this is what I specialize in only because um, I decided that for our family, with Z and I, we needed more emotional support because we're very functioning autistics. Matter of fact, a lot of times when, and I'm very open about my diagnosis, and a lot of times I'll get people that say, well, he, you know, Z doesn't look autistic or you don't look autistic. It's just because we're very functioning and we've, I learned uh, how to cope and how to survive on my own um, through my parents' strict upbringing and, um, some of it I learned, I had to learn on my own um, coping mechanisms and things like that. And, and, and we're very blessed that we've been able to do that. And I've been able to pass that down to my son. Um, but we are definitely on the spectrum. Um, if you know us, if you ever get to know us really, really well on a personal level, um, you'll see the traits that, that we, that we, um, that we show pretty, pretty openly. So an ESA, animal is what was more important in our house. Um, so emotional support animals um, are not considered service dogs or therapy dogs at all. They are not allowed to go in a public area. The only time that they're allowed to go in a public area, um, and this has been changing a lot, unfortunately, I just saw on, um, a news article that um, American Airlines no longer allow emotional support um, animals on planes, which I think is totally unfair. I think they need to, 
if they're going to do that, they need to specify what's not allowed. I think a dog or a cat should always be allowed on an airplane if it's an emotional support um, animal. And legally, it's supposed to be allowed. So I don't even know how these airlines are getting away with that. But that's I'll get on my soapbox about that another day. Very it totally irritates me because I'm going to be flying here soon and um, I'm going to have to figure out what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to have to, I don't know, get some, I don't know what I'm going to do because <laughs> I'm not going to be able to bring my, my dog with me. So, but anyway, and I hate to fly. Um, okay. So they're not considered um, service dogs or therapy, therapy dogs. Um, therefore they don't have the license and that's what keeps them from being in a public space. And they're, the allowances for those are very, very, very limited. Um, so if you need a pet um, to be able to go in a public, in any public place, grocery store, restaurant, whatever, you really need to concentrate on getting a dog and make sure it goes to the proper training and it gets licensed as a um, service dog, a disability service dog, or a disability therapy dog. And when it gets um, registered and legal, um, then they're able, you'll see, you'll know the difference because they'll be wearing a vest and it'll say work dog. If it's a work dog, it'll, it'll say what it pertains to. So like the canine unit, with the vest says police. Um, search and rescue here in the county I live in, their dog vests say rescue on it. That's how you kind of notice the difference between a work dog and a um, a service dog or a therapy dog. Um, so I know um, specifically therapy dogs that are um, that are assigned to those with um, individuals with uh, PTSD. Their vests literally say PTSD, or it says vet. Um, so you'll see specific vests and what that dog's specialty is. Those, that's how you know the difference. Those dogs don't have any limitations. Um, they have a license card that the handler is supposed to carry at all times. And that way they can show, hey, yes, this dog is licensed. And they can't be denied service or entry in any public space. If you need that, that's the route you need to go. If you don't need that, an emotional support dog is a great, great um, way to go, especially especially because ESC, ESAs, they don't um, restrict on what type of animal you can have. And I have examples of what can be con what is um, considered or can be an emotional support animal, which I think is neat. So. Um, ESAs are not considered service animals under the ADA, okay, which is the American Disability Act, which means they don't have as many protections. So that you need to consider that when you're you're getting ready to to um, own a pet um, for for that type of help that your family might need. They are considered companion animals, and these are what they're used for. They're used to provide ease and anxiety. They're used to help with depression. Um, they're actually also used to help with some phobias, um, loneliness. Um, they help with autism. They help ease with meltdowns, which is really important. Um, I am... Um, go ahead. I, I don't mind saying my age. I'm 47. And I have, as an, a grown adult woman, I have, I had, I have meltdowns. I do. And they can be triggered by anything. Um, I had a meltdown yesterday. It was horrible. <clears throat> so, and, and without my dogs, I, I don't know where, I don't, I don't know how, how I would be able to ride that roller coaster without my dog. <laughs> so, um, they're also, okay. So, if you have an emotional support animal, this is what you have to have for your animal to be considered and legally in the United States an emotional support animal. Now, these guidelines and restrictions are going to be different according to what country you're in. So definitely, you know, Google emotional support animal in and wherever you're at, because these are different in every country. 
Okay. So, but in America, um, the owner, the handler has to be diagnosed with a psychological or an emotional disorder. And it has to be in writing from a doctor or a psychiatrist or psychologist. Has to, you have to have your diagnosis in writing. <clears throat> and like I said, there are limited rights with an emotional support animal. So, um, and when you have your emotional support animal, you have to make sure that you, you acquire a letter um, from your psychiatrist stating that your animal is legally a, an emotional support animal. And you have to keep that letter handy when you're, tr when you have your dog with you or your cat or whatever your animal is. The Fair Housing Act mandates, mandates that if you have this letter in your possession, that reasonable accommodations have to be met, even if the place does not allow pets. This is huge for those of you who rent. So if I needed to get rent an apartment and it was only the, the only place I could find or the only place I felt safe in, that landlord, that facility would have to allow me to have that pet live with me in their facility. Now, I would still have to pay an animal deposit and all of that, but legally they would not be allowed to deny me um, a lease based on the fact that I have an animal. If they did and I could prove it, I could sue for discrimination and I could get the disability Department of the United States, um, I could get a free lawyer to help fight um, that facility. So it's really important to understand. Do not let um, anyone try and, and discriminate against you based off your disability and your need to have an emotional um, animal because they're not allowed to do it with a service dog or a therapy dog. And they sure ain't allowed to do it with an emotional support animal, as long as you have that letter of authenticity. Um, and I posted in the description and I'll double check afterwards, but I posted one of the um, organizations you can go to, to get that letter of approval for your animal. Okay. <clears throat> All right. The Air Carrier Access Act. This is the one I'm talking about. The Air Carrier Access Act says that no airline, train, bus, no one in the trans transportation business is allowed to deny you access with your emotional support animal. They're supposed to allow you to ride with your dog or your cat. Um, so I don't understand how... Um, these flight carriers, these airlines are denying support animals. I can understand, you know, if someone comes on, oh, this is my snake or this is my parrot or this is, okay, certain animals I can understand, but they're denying access to um, travelers that have dogs or cats that have that letter. And I don't understand how they're getting away with this. Um, I'm definitely going to look more into it because that might be a fight I'm willing to take up because it's just wrong. Um, the Air Carrier Access Act was built for this purpose, to help those that are um, have a disability be able to, to still travel. All right, so now we're going to get into the autism, ADHD, anxiety, all those type of things, but specifically autism. Um, autism support animals de-escalates an emotional meltdown. And this is how they do it. They either lean against a child or adult, um, but more times than not, what they'll do is they'll gently get up in your lap and lay in your lap. Or if I'm laying down, my dogs, Briley, the black one, she she specifically gets, she, she'll curl up. She has a long body because she's part dosh hound but she'll curl up in like a C position and get all up, up here. And her face is usually tucked right under my chin. Um, and her warmth and the pressure of her hitting me on the upper part of my chest helps calm me down. 
and that's what they're that's what they're um, trained to do. And some um, some the breeds I'm going to share with you just naturally do it, and they're not trained to do it. It's just one of the traits that they have. So traits in breeds is a very important part. I need to X these out because I can't see what you guys are saying. <sighs> okay, there you go. All right. Um, they provide also affection and comfort. This is really, really huge. Um, there is a stereotype out there that is not true at all. And that is um, autistic individuals are not affectionate and not loving. It's far from the truth. We are. We just don't know how to articulate it very well. And we definitely need it. Um, now, I do, I do have an issue with being touched. But my dog, I have never had an issue with my dog curling up against me and loving on me. Um, animals are just different. They're just different. Um, as far as a human being, I have to be warm before you before you go out and, and touch me. <laughs> I have to know that you're fixing to come in my bubble. Um, so that's why animals are really important for the autism community because they have a they have a way of penetrating our world um, in a very gentle way. And we need that. We need that, that connection. Um, they also promote social interaction by doing this because I may not be very good at being social interactive with one of you, but I can interact with my dog all day long, 24 hours a day. <clears throat> they, it also helps build communication skills, um, especially um, when you're a child, um, a lot of it, and especially if you're either, um, partially mute, um, or mute altogether, animals have a way of being able to speak and, and be able to, um, communicate with a child and an adult, because a lot of times we communicate without words. Uh, we communicate with our body language, um, and, and what we do, our actions. Um, I'm selectively mute. So what that means is I can get on the screen and talk to you. No problem. But if you're right in front of me, I'm probably not going to say too much unless I've known you for years. Um, so I, I, and I have this problem when I go to church and, and I have a problem going to church because it just the, the thought of me having to be around a whole lot of people and expecting to carry on a conversation stresses me out. So a lot of times I'll end up just staying home and watching church through the internet. Um, it also helps to manage emotions, which is huge because a lot of us on the spectrum have a hard time with regulating our emotions and being able to stay at a even level. We're either up or we're down, happy or angry. There's, it's hard to stay kind of in the middle. Um, and emotional support animals help with that. And also in children, it helps um, develop play skills. You know, when you're on the spectrum, you don't play like the typical child. An animal doesn't care how you play. Could care less. They just, they just want to be played with. And um, it opens that door for that child to be able to play <clears throat> without any expectations. All right, so let's get into the type of emotional animals there are. Some of these are probably going to surprise you. Uh, Tinker's wife, let me see if I can put this on the screen. Have you seen the speech buttons? Speech button dogs are learning to use to tell humans what they want. I have seen something like that in an article. Um, it was a while ago. I'll have to relook that up. And uh, read on that more, definitely, because that is interesting. Okay. Oh, hang on. Homestead. Homestead in the Heartland says, I will have to do a video, too, from a medical perspective, how to improve symptoms and what has worked for us. Yes, we are empathetic. My husband doesn't like his bubble invaded either. Yes. <laughs> In my bubble. I work really hard to protect my bubble. Yes, 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 yes. That would be 
Wonderful. I would love that collaboration. Um, definitely let me know when you're going to do that because I don't want to miss that. Thank you for sharing that. All right. So here are some really cool um, emotional support animals that you probably haven't thought of. So one, you've got your two typicals, dogs and cats, obviously. Um, they're probably the one of the easier ones to get and the ones that people think of the most. But you also have guinea pigs, parrots, and horses. Those are the top um, emotional support animals that are listed. Now, I have some friends in the autism community who have snakes. And literally, they will sit and let their snake curl up in their arms and around their neck. And it soothes them. It's the pressure. It's the tightness of the snake squeezing. It's the feel of them. Hey, whatever works for you. <laughs> now, some animals are harder to get ESA licensing or registration than others. Um, the most easiest type of animals to get your, your ESA registration letter um, approved of um, is dogs and cats, obviously. Um, but you can do other animals. Um, you have to go through an appeal process, um, but it can be done. It's just a lengthy, well, the whole process is lengthy, to be honest with you. So let's see. Thank you for that, um, for that link to that article, Patty. I'm definitely going to look that up. I appreciate that for anyone who's interested. Um, you can just scroll through the chat later if you need to, and you'll be able to get to the link to read that article. And I'm probably going to read that article and feature it, in, feature it in my Facebook blog. I do have a Facebook blog. It's called Freehandly Made. Um, you guys can follow that page. Um, I Usually what's on YouTube is on that page as well. Sometimes there's things I put on there that I can't put in YouTube. Um, just because of the different formatting, but you can follow me on there as well. All right, so we're almost done. All right, so these these are the top breeds um, specifically for autism support. Um, so there are other breeds that are good um, as well for other other conditions, but because of the traits of autism, um, these are the ones that are the best for your household if you're if you um, have a loved one that has autism. You have the golden retriever, you have the Labrador, Saint Bernard, Collie, Poodle, Labradoodle, which is a poodle and a Labrador. Those are really neat dogs, by the way. Um, German Shepherd. Um, Bernese Mountain Dog, um, a Newfoundland, which is a type of dog, Beagle, um, a Corgi, Yorkshire Terrier, um, a Charles Spaniel, and a Chihuahua. Now, I didn't see Dosh Hound on here, but, ha but my dogs are half Chihuahua, so I say I'm in the good. Um, and I totally understand why they say emotional support animals cannot be in a public forum um, in most circumstances. And that's because anytime I have to take Paisley, the brown, my brown one, she's fine. She may bark a little bit, but you start petting her, she's going to just give you kisses all over. My black one, however, my black dog, Briley, she's feisty. And she's very, very protective over me. So even when I take her to a vet, I have to put a little tiny little muzzle on her mouth. She has never bit anybody, but I don't want to take that chance. Um, so, yeah, I would never take Briley into a public space. If I have to go and do grocery shopping and I go into the parking lot and I see the parking lot is packed, I'm not going in that grocery store. I will turn around and I'll go to a smaller grocery store. Or I'll go home and I'll order my groceries online and do a grocery pickup. That's how bad my anxiety is. So um, if I had a therapy dog, I could go into the grocery store. But, um, you know, I was newly diagnosed and I didn't know the difference. Um, now, when 
our two fur babies we have now cross the rainbow bridge, my husband and I are already planning on getting a dog that can be licensed as a therapy dog. So I can go into public places and be able to get through a grocery store without having an anxiety attack or having a meltdown. Um, so just food for thought, really think about what your needs are as a family and as the individual that has that diagnosis. It's huge. That is all I have. I hope that answered um, those questions about what traits to look for, what types of um, specifically breeds are good. Um, now, when it comes to cats, and if the breed's not listed, as long as the breed, including cats, as long as the breed doesn't mind being held and handled a lot um, and is loving and wants to be around a human, you're pretty much pretty good. Um, so if you're if you're wanting to have a cat, don't just get a cat and bring it home. Um, if you want to go to a rescue, I always say rescue the animal. Rescue, rescue, rescue. Stay out of pet stores. Please go to a rescue and they'll allow you to come more than once to sit with that animal and see how it's going to react with you. Definitely, definitely do that with cats. Um, a lot of cats, you know, they have all animals have different, different personalities, including dogs, but you want to make sure that whatever animal you get, they're, they're going to be inviting. They're going to want to be held and cuddled and loved on a lot. They're not going to mind if you come up to them out of nowhere and grab them, especially a child who's maybe going to have a meltdown. Um, and I've done this with my own dogs. I'll be really upset. And without even thinking, because when you're in the middle of an emotional crisis, the brain, the thinking side of the brain does not connect to the emotional side. And I'll literally just come up to my dog, grab her, scoop her up and go to the bedroom. And she's just like, "What? where are we going? What, what's going on? Your animal has to be able to handle that. Um, so when you're getting ready to purchase an animal or adopt an animal, spend time with it. Don't get it the same day. Spend time with it. Leave. Wait two days. Come back. Spend time with it. And then another thing I get is, well, what if they're gone by the time if I come back two days later and they're gone? Well, then that animal wasn't meant to be. It's another animal that's waiting. Um, so be very, very picky is what I'm talking about. Just do not be afraid to be very, very picky. Um, let me show this one. You're the drop off homestead there. <laughs> All right. We, we were that for cats for a while. And sadly, I'm not a cat person, at least having one in the house. Um, homesteading says that they're the, um, <laughs> they are, um, this, the energy of the animal that helps balance your energy frequencies to keep you calm and reduce anxiety. Yes, very much so. We are measurable in tunable frequencies, EX, EEGs, EMGs, e EKGs, AEDs, etc. Absolutely. Yes, you do not want a high strung animal to be your emotional support animal because if if you're already high strong and have anxiety, a high strong animal is just going to stress you out even more. Um, yes, I love that. So, so true. So, so true. All right. So chat is opened up. Thank you, Simply Jan. I appreciate that. I appreciate that so much. I do. I do. I do. Very much so. Um, let's see. I don't know how to. Um, I was going to invite people to come up on the panel, but I don't know how to do that. Anybody can tell me how to do that. <laughs> if there's anyone who wants to come up on the panel. I'm not sure how to do that. Let me see. It has an invite button. Okay. Well, if I go to Messenger, then, um, yeah, I can't get to Messenger. Let me see if I can figure out how to do this. I guess I should have sent that out before. I saw that um, 
I don't know how to post the invite. How do you post the invite? I'm on two different. Um, I'm on two different. Hang on, let me see. There should be a link that you can post in chat. Okay, let me see. Says copy to clipboard. No. <laughs> I don't know either. <laughs> and I'm I'm learning my Chromebook too, and um I don't even know how to like my Chromebook doesn't have um I try to do control paste and that didn't work. Um, my Chromebook doesn't look the same as my, <laughs> as my, uh, let me see if I can do it this way. <laughs> All right, let me see. Okay, we're gonna try and see if I can do this. I'm not sure if it's gonna work, but we're gonna give it a shot. Did it work, Patty? Do you see it? Oh, it worked! All right, so if you wanna hop in, if you wanna hop in and join um, the stream, I'll see you pop up, I'm assuming. <laughs> And I can let you in. Does anyone have any questions at all um, for me that you might? And it doesn't have to be on um, emotional support pets. <laughs> I know I can be taught. <laughs> um, it could be on anything. It could be on um, any questions you may have on um, autism or ADHD or um depression disorder or anxiety disorder. It could be a question about my special interest, Cabbage Patch, my Cabbage Patch kids that I'm working on, or it could be questions on Z that you might have, anything at all. Um, it's open. Anything at all, it's open. Um, I'm really excited that my it should show me when someone's coming in, too, I'm assuming. Um, that uh, my my sissy-in-law, Gail Southern Living. Um, all right, that's a really good question. So I'm going to pop this up on the screen. How did you get diagnosed initially? Um, it was a long process, actually. Um, my story actually started with um, our son Z. Um, we had fought for five years to get him assessed um, because he was having major sensory issues <laughs> and um, he was having meltdowns at daycare. I mean, when you're four years old or three or four years old and you almost, your, your child almost gets kicked out of daycare for good you know, there's an issue um, because he didn't, he wasn't showing those types of things, those issues initially at home. Um, for the most part, I mean, he had issues, but not like what he was displaying at daycare. Um, because when you're home, it's, it's quiet. You don't have a whole bunch of children running around. Um, but it took us five years to even have someone even willing to even take a look at our son, which is just ridiculous. Um, he was diagnosed with ADHD at age four. I was diagnosed with ADHD in my early 20s. I think I was like 24 when I was diagnosed with ADHD. And even when I was diagnosed, I was not explained. They did not explain to me what that was and how that was affecting me. They just threw medicine at me, which totally <laughs> irritates me. Um, and then um, when my son was five, we found a clinician that specialized in autism um, and they were licensed through what they called FSU card, which is Florida State University. 
card program. Um, and that's a program that studies autism. And uh, so that's how that's where they got their license at. And we had to go through an interviewing process. So let's see. Z's fix and be nine. So that was four years ago. Um, and you, the parents had to be interviewed because they had to rule out everything because the traits of autism can be found in so many other diagnoses um, that it's crazy. So you had to rule everything else out. And the way they did that was interview the parents. And I had to answer a hundred questions on this questionnaire, which killed me. One, I'm ADHD. So I had to use um, a piece of scrap paper that I had in my, in my purse and literally go question by question by question to make sure I didn't answer in the wrong spot because it was those little bubbles that you had to um, color in. And I went to the therapist, knocked on the door, and I'm like, do I really have to answer these? I hate answering questions. And he kind of just looked at me. He's like, yes, Ms. Patterson, I need you I need you to, to please try your best and answer these questions. It took me over an hour to finish that questionnaire when it takes most people like maybe 30 minutes. <laughs> so all well and said and done, um, we come back two weeks later. And he gives us his uh, diagnosis for our son, which was severe ADHD and also ASD, autism spectrum disorder. And then he looks at me and, and he looks at my husband and he says, I want to assess both of you for the same thing. Well, my husband completely got upset and was irritated and um, was insulted by being requested to be assessed. Um He's like, I know I have issues, but I'm good. Um, but me, I felt lost my whole life and I wasn't good. And so I jumped at the opportunity, Patty, to be assessed. And it was about a two month long process. Um, the worst part of being diagnosed was I had a session where I had to sit there and um, the clinician was across the room at the other table. And they said, just do whatever you want to do for the next 45 minutes. And I'm like, are you going to be in here? And he was like, yes, I'm going to be watching. I'm going to just be taking notes. And I'm like, are you kidding me? So for 45 minutes, I could not, I could not sit still. Um, I was uncomfortable. Um, I kept looking over. Um, oh, here we go. Hey. Hey. Welcome. Anyway, so. I'm, I'm sitting there for 45 minutes and I'm being stared at. Okay. For one, I don't like being stared at. And this person is studying me and I'm watching them write the, the freaking notes in the freaking notebook. I'm like, what's he writing? What's he thinking about me? What's in there? I mean, I was like totally just out of my gourd. And then right after that, he gave me a Ziploc bag with all these little toys and trinkets in it. And he gives it to me. He's like, okay, take everything out of this bag and tell me a story. I'm like, tell your story. I'm like, yes, tell me a story. Use your imagination and then tell me a story. So that was another thing I had to do. And then I also had to tell him a story out of a book that had no words. And literally all I did was literally just describe what I saw in the book. <laughs> I didn't know how to tell a story. Anyway, so I went through this. So anyway, that's that was the three parts that um that was the three parts that was the most worst for me um, during that whole two month assessment was was being zeroed at for 45 minutes and then being asked to play with my toys. I'm like, I didn't even play as a child. You want me to play? You know what I did? I reenacted the scene from Alice in Wonderland, the scene of the where they're drinking the tea with the Mad Hatter. I literally just recreated something I saw on TV, which is a trait, by the way, of autism. Um, so that's how my diagnosis came uh, about. Um, let's see, there was another question that I missed. Am I echoing? You are. Is your YouTube on? No. No. Okay. I closed it out. Tinker's wife. Asked, what is that sound? Yeah, I don't even have my YouTube on either, so I don't know what why that's echoing. That's weird. Um, ask what is your favorite color? I'll go my favorite, out and come back in. Okay. My favorite color is purple. I'm obsessed with purple. Um, my favorite flower 
is sunflowers. I'm absolutely, absolutely obsessed with sunflowers. Uh, what is my favorite food? Oh my gosh. Um, I can't eat it as much anymore as I used to, but, um, I used to eat popcorn literally every single night before bed. Um, I do, I do deal with food. Definitely deal with food. Um, I have a huge issue with food. There's a lot of things I can't eat because of the texture or the smell. Um, like I can't eat peas, the smell of peas and the the way it feels, the way it's mushing. I'm um, in my mouth. I can't, I can't handle it. Oh, Gail, your phone is dying. Can you plug it in? Yeah, I'm sending if you, I, I think I can have like four people in here. So, yeah, here, I'll, I'll post the, the invite again. There you go. It is, um, a lot of us that have food issues, it is sensory related. Um, I have issues with smell. Um, a simple smell can throw me into a meltdown. All right, we're going to try this again. Is that better? Oh, yeah, that's a lot better. All right. Okay. And there's Shannon. Oh. Hi. Hey. I didn't know if my, it would work or not because I don't, I don't have Wi-Fi. I only have the data on my device. So we got rid of our Wi-Fi last year. So out here on the farm. Well, I've heard, I've heard with Stream Farm that um, – or Stream Yard that – um, data is actually better than Wi-Fi. Oh, as far as bandwidth. So. Well, then maybe yeah, I should figure out. out how to do that so I can go live on my channel yeah. <laughs> because I was thinking yeah, I couldn't go live. The, um, I couldn't. I was thinking that I was one of the tips that are on um, when you go to the stream. Like, like if you Google Streamyard and you see um, the best way to have Streamyard and what's required, they they actually say on there that data is better than Wi-Fi. Huh. It's clear. So cool. Well, good to know because we were thinking we couldn't go live till we had 1,000 subscribers and we're almost there, but we're not there yet. <laughs> yeah, so. I, I don't know if I'll ever get to 1,000 subscribers. Oh, um, you will. Sure, you, you will. Totally will. Um, but yeah, and you can I do can. if you're on a PC and you do YouTube, you can do YouTube Live directly through your PC. You just can't use YouTube Live on your cell phone until you get to a thousand subscribers. Okay. And I like StreamYard better. I tried um, YouTube Live last night with Gail <laughs> and with um, with um, Patty from Tinker's Wife, and it was awful. <laughs> it was awful. Wow. So Just yeah, lots of buffering. Is lots of bu okay, lots of buffering. So good. I will tell yeah. my daughter because she's the tech savvy one and does mm -hmm. the editing, and I don't. I'm a, I'm anti. Yeah, <laughs> I like StreamYard a lot better. I don't know if I'll ever do a YouTube live directly through YouTube again after my experience last night. I now, mean, how do you? I'm go sorry. Ahead. Uh, how do you do that and have all three of you on there? Because I okay. never had that option. She just dropped out. Um, you're with the free version of StreamYard, you're supposed to be able to have four. I can't do this on my cell phone, um, but as long as I'm on a PC or I'm on my Chromebook, I can I can have up to four people. No, I mean Sorry. live YouTube live because oh I couldn't do it. it. Yeah, I couldn't have them on live. I was just no. um, we were okay. we were in the chat. Is I how got we were you. I just about how awful the said. experience was. <laughs> was yeah. Crazy. Sorry. It's okay. I went yeah, out sometimes it works and real good. Like on stream, stream yard. Uh, oh there's God. times I get kicked off all the time. Like on micros, I get, I kept getting buffered. But I think my computer was updating. So. Can, can I borrow your daughter? Can I borrow your daughter? Borrow your daughter. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, she's almost fifteen, and she's the one that knows how to do all I the know. tech. 
I know, right? And they're done. They're like, okay, here you go. Yep. So, <laughs> so like, and, girls, like, I didn't realize how old I was getting until last Christmas, my last Christmas with my girls before we moved up here to mountain land. <laughs> I didn't realize how old I was getting until my daughter was trying to teach me how to use, um, it wasn't TikTok. What was it? Um, it's one of those other apps, Snapchat. That's what it was. Oh, I, I won't let my daughter out. Snapchat to save my life. No, yeah. No. Yeah. My daughter, my daughter wanted Snapchat and I wouldn't let her get Snapchat. Cause yeah. So, anyway, that's another story. Yeah. But. Well, I mean, they're adults. So. Oh, they're yeah. adults. Yeah. Yes. Um, one is in college. She's actually in Tallahassee. She told me where that tornado was. I called, um, I was on with micro farmer and, um, Gigi, I have to let my dog out. I'll be I right Gigi Homestead was talking, she's in Tallahassee and she was talking about how there was a tornado. I was like, what? My daughter's there. So right in the middle of the live, I called her and she's like, I'm fine, mom. Apparently a tornado touched down over there by the airport. Wow. Um, but she did get a lot of hail. Um, but luckily their, their vehicles are under a metal, like a metal garage type parking yeah. spot area. So their cars were protected, but they did get a lot of hail. Well, anyways, the reason why I had, uh, I, I came across your video about support pets cause we're looking, you know, I have kids with autism and then that's yeah. how I got diagnosed was my son was diagnosed and I had genetic testing done and I have a micro deletion on chromosome one, six two, on chromosome 16, basically mm -hmm. for autism. And I had, I was like, Oh, so I have autism. Okay. That explains a lot. You know, I am, here's, I'm kind of, here's an interesting fact, just so you know, most females that are older that get diagnosed are diagnosed because their children were diagnosed and they yeah. bond most of their adult life and all through childhood, not knowing that they were autistic. And the reason is because our traits are a lot more subtle um, than males with autism. And we're great chameleons. We can blend in. We can blend in with a wall and not be seen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the geneticists, and I'm a nurse, by the way, I left my nursing career. So I I have a medical background to elaborate further, but the geneticist explained that the deletion that I have was, um, doesn't negatively impact females, only males. The mm -hmm. ir ir irony of this is my son that was originally diagnosed does not have this deletion. He has a different deletion, which I'm assuming my husband has, mm -hmm. but my other son has the micro deletion I have, but he only was diagnosed with speech delay, sens SPD, sensory processing difficulty, and then had to have food therapy. But he was never diagnosed on the spectrum because he's very social. Like where I'm very over social, like I, yeah. you know, but that's I don't like trait, the though. That's a trait huh? on the spectrum. That is yeah. a trait on the spectrum. There are autistics that are overly social and crave that socialness. That is an action. I don't have that. Just so y'all know. <laughs> so I may have that, but, but the thing great. is, is I don't like to go to church or be around a lot of people either. Cause I can feel the energy. And if there's bad energy, I don't want to be around it. There's something yeah. to be. So that's another thing. And why, so I was looking up stuff on pets. And that's how I came across your channel. And then, um, was like, Oh, that totally, I, so I subscribed as I was like, oh, we have a lot in common. Um, I, so I left my nursing career three and a half years ago after, um, having health issues in real, in relation to, you know, to be practiced as a nurse, you have to take, um, I'm not, I don't want to get this taken down. VCs will be the, if you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Yes. You know. I'm going to say VCs. So I don't get, we don't get in trouble. So, um, I had to have six of them because I was older and hadn't got undergone, um, the CDC guide, you know, I haven't had as many. So I had to receive six at once and I got really sick and then, um, fast. And then you could look back at what two of my three kids have the, have BC injuries. So my dad, mm -hmm. and so I had gone down that rabbit hole. And my, my son that has the diagnosis of autism, he stopped talking five days after his 12 months. And then he was non his 12 month feces. And then he was nonverbal for eight months and speech uh, therapy, OT, IT. I mean, we're talking therapies for three and a half years. And I detoxed him with an omega fish oil, cod liver, magnesium mm -hmm. supplement. Um, 
and he snapped out of it. Now he's very high functioning. He still has, he was discharged off his IEP and he's in a regular class and he's like two years above his peers as far as intelligence, but he still struggles with anxiety, self interest behavior. If he gets, gets mad at himself and punches himself and hits himself. And then, and then I could show you right now, our entire table is all Legos. Legos and puzzles. And then you have my, you can see, there's my seed starting area. Anyways. <laughs> um, <laughs> So they, they got, they brought, Legos they have all their Legos down here. Not all. They have like probably one, <laughs> one tenth. You hate like, yeah. We have one tenth yeah. the amount of Legos of theirs down here compared to what's up in their room. It's insane. Anyways. So we kind of have been doing, so I wanted to share some of what has worked for us as far as detoxing right. and getting yeah. people, what people aren't rec People don't know what's like some of the stuff that's going on in the world as I have a little velociraptor here right now. Anyways, squirrel, there it was. Okay, anyways, <laughs> um, <laughs> so the V, okay, the VCs and other things have heavy metals and it, those heavy metals are in, mm -hmm. in small amounts are toxic to us. And yes, in, in, in peer reviewed scientific studies of the VCs, the, in animal studies, it proves it bypasses the blood brain barrier and ends up in the brain. They have not done the, they have not done the human studies, but if it does it in animals, it does it in humans. Okay. Exactly. It's biological. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if we have these heavy metals that they're injecting into us, bypass the blood brain barrier, gets into the white matter of our brain, and then we're exposed to frequencies that are the same level of the that right there mm -hmm. the mind, right, right we don't I, yeah yeah mine's not in the kitchen it's out here so if i have or half i rarely use it if i have to use it i'm not by it right when we're using well, it well we own two we just don't have i'm not i don't allow them in the house yeah yeah um ours is actually if with it's a good way to test it that it's safe is to put a phone in it and then mm -hmm. shut the door and then try calling it with another device. If it doesn't ring, it then it's like it acts as a good Faraday cage and like the 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 mesh then is working and is blocking that that uh, frequency. Great. Those those millimeter wave frequencies, correct? So ours does that. Like my dad. Sorry. Like my dad. Like, no, you're fine. Then my dad's doesn't do that. So that means his microwave isn't properly with the mesh to protect you. So ours is a yeah. good one. And we use it like a Faraday cage to put our phones in along with our EMF. So this gets to what's going on in our world right now. Mm -hmm. um, we are being exposed. If, if you have, what happens when you put aluminum in the microwave? Pop, 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 pop. Right now, right, yeah. the devices that we have the devices that we are using are the same level frequencies, if not higher than the microwave millimeter frequencies. Okay, so we are carrying a microwave on us at all times. And what people don't realize is we have DNA, we have electrons in our DNA, we are measurable and tunable frequencies, right? You shuffle your feet on the ground, and you can touch something and it sparks, oh, yeah. right? Yes, they yeah, measure our brain weight, they measure our brain waves in Hertz, our EKGs, eight, you know, restart our heart with AEDs, we are electrical, grounding our energy outside being barefoot, grounding earthing, decrease within two hours will decrease all inflammation from the body and get rid of inflammation and get rid of all these comorbidities we have. Right. So if we have these heavy metals built up in our bodies and we're being exposed to those frequencies with the towers and the technology, you're going to have an increase in ADHD, autism, Alzheimer's. Right. right? So we need to detox from those things as much as possible. So I, um, we, so the cod liver and fish oil is what we did with Mason when he was younger. And then, um, I came, my, my, so my, my sister-in-law, my one sister-in-law is a child speech pathologist. So when Mason stopped talking, I called her, I was like, what, what's wrong? What's wrong? She, and this is when I found out, this is when I started to go down the rabbit hole. Cause I didn't know. She's like, did he receive his VCs recently? I said, uh, like a week ago, five. And then I was like, Oh, five days ago. So, you know, <laughs> You're like, what's going on here? Right. So yeah. I didn't, you know, cause I, we are not taught. There's no, there's no proper informed consent in the medical community. I was not aware of this or taught this in medical school and nursing school and not nothing. 
wasn't ta- I wasn't taught this. So had I known what I know now, my children would not have received anything. Then fast forward to how many years later, you know, um, my daughter or, or, or not now how many years later, my daughter um, at 11 received her and I was arguing with the doctor about this and I should have just our school was mandating she received for her to go to school, the HPV, the Gardasil. So mm-hmm. I, I regret it every day of my life. I fought it. I held off for six months and then she wasn't going to be able to attend school if I didn't do it. So I allowed it. What happens with it? Emergent allergic reaction on site right away, 24 hours later, high fever, um, and flu symptoms. Five days later, um, she can't get out of bed. And day seven, I have her in the clinic and she has a low titter for lupus at 11. Okay. Wow. So wow. she's been struggling, struggling, struggling. And then I just had her in the doctor again a couple of days ago because she's passing out and having all these neurological symptoms, neck, back pain and pain in her right hand and all these issues, numbness and blood sugar. We thought it was blood sugar issues, checked her blood sugar, wasn't blood sugar. Cause my grandpa died from type one at 28. So I was thinking, Oh, is it type one developing? No, wasn't that. So now then her, he, her ESR, which is urethral sedimentation rate and CRP C reactive protein, they indicate infl- inflammatory markers. So her, when she was diagnosed with lupus, it was very elevated, like her ESR was 16 and her CRP was elevated while well, she had her lab work and everything was low. Her ESR was so low, it's now one, which it normal is three to 13, according to our, our hospital. So, uh, she's one. And so it's low. So now she has to see a hematologist and check for blood disorders like leukemia and shit. So she goes in February 15th. So my advice is to you do not allow any of your children or any pass that information, the HP, the HPV one has more issues and um, mm-hmm. problems, side effects than all other vaccines combined. Luckily, so I, huh? Um, luckily, I was I was very um, blessed when um, living in Florida, where I was living at the time. I don't know if it's changed because my daughters are adult adults now. That was not mandatory, and I was able to skip that, so they didn't get that. And they're they're making boys get it too, which. Um, no, my son will not be getting that. No, 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 don't. Well, there, it also is known to cause infertility. So my yeah. daughter may have issues having that's children because it, 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 the, the, because of the protein that's being used in it. And that's another thing, the new CV pass they want. Let me tell you, like, <laughs> ooh, like I'm not doing it. <laughs> the, the stupidity, like no. there's no critical thinking anymore. People no, don't use well, any. No. People just fall blindly. They don't do their research. Yeah. And they so don't, I've don't done do my research, research and have a medical background and I'm screaming from the mountaintops down to the point where it's like, you can't ca- keep casting pearls at the swine, right? Matthew seven, six, mm-hmm. can't keep throwing this knowledge out. If they're not going to pay attention. And Jesus yeah. said to just walk away this to, yep. this, to, to his disciples. If they didn't want to hear it, walk away. I'm to that point because we, yep. yeah. Anyway, my, so. uh, my cousin Heather, um, she's very vocal about it, and um, she's <laughs> she's been in Facebook prison a couple of times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have been. I've been in trouble on Facebook oh. too. It, it, you, you're posting peer-reviewed scientific studies on all of the previous CV VCs yep. they've tried to come up with. It's big pharma. Uh, Big pharma yeah, they, they, they cause it, anti. It's that's not just true. about. It's not just about what's yeah. in them that's toxic. That the this messenger RNA or recombinant RNA technology, they've never been able to get away from the fact that it causes antibody enhancement, which is pathogenic priming. So mm-hmm. all the people, the millions of people that have received it now, in I don't know three months to a year, thirty percent of them will probably die. So oh, you no. think. We've had a pandemic now. It's yeah. Because of the pathogenic priming, the pathogenic priming of this particular VC, what it does is it causes your immune system to overreact with. um, So when you're exposed to the live wild virus after receiving the VC, you, your body goes overreacts and creates that cytokine storm and 
in the in the test trial in the in the studies that were done previously when they tried to come in 2008 2012 2015 when they tried to come up with the ferrets and the monkeys 33 percent of them you know and they're that's just like, rushing it through they're rushing that, it through that's ebola death rate by the way that's the ebola death rate oh so people that have received this now <clears throat> once they get exposed to and it's not even just being exposed to that particular live virus. If their immune system is challenged in any way or exposed to a retrovi retrovirus, mm -hmm. rhinovirus, influenza virus, it's going to overreact and cause that cytokine storm. And you can't, it, it, you're, it's, we're in trouble. Like, it, it, bye, Gail Southern Living. Bye, bye. Love you. So, so my, 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 my plea to anyone that's here or rewatches this is to get, um, EMF bags. Let me see if I can go find mine for their devices. If you're not aware of where is mine? What's an EMF bag? Electromagnetic frequency. It's like, it acts as a Faraday cage. So this one is called, it's called mission darkness. Uh-huh. Um, so uh it you, you when you are putting it when you go to town or whatever, it because what people don't realize is if you turn your phone off, uh huh, it's still on. Oh. Mm -hmm. Only the display it you're only turn that you don't you do not have access to the battery. You are only turning the display off. There is a hidden oh. camera up here that's constantly watching us, CIA, NSA, like I had no people and no you stuff. You used too. to be able to take your battery out. And if yeah. you notice, you cannot access your battery anymore. So wow. What people, if you research the, this technology and look at the patents, what people uh -huh. are unaware of is there is a biometric tracking spectroscopy sensor on each device that measures a three and a half foot radius. So it can sense your energy, your biometrics, your energy. And so if you post something on Facebook, or, or say something that the powers that be don't like, you mm -hmm. actually can become a targeted individual and be hit with frequencies and make you sick. Just look at the mic. Yeah. Look at the microwave weapon. US, look, look up the um, US embassy microwave weaponry being used on our US embassy officials in Cuba and other countries. And now that look also like you might be having a conversation with someone next thing you know, you have something pop up. Hey, this is suggested for you. How do you think they found that out? Because, yeah. Through your phone. So <laughs> anyways, this, this is, let me see if I can, get, oh, Mission Darkness. This one is about $23, $24. It folds over, has Velcro, mm -hmm. and it completely blocks the signal so you can't be tracked. Because they're tracking you, you on your phone that? all the time. It's such, Always. Well, my husband got this on the devil's Amazon, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, he got it. He got it on Amazon. Um, okay. But you can. In this emission darkness is made in the USA. That's another thing too. So people like FBI and uh, they, they use these products because okay. they so yes. people can't get your information like people have no idea if you it sounds sci-fi this stuff that's coming out people have no idea i've looked at the patents on this technology and from a medical perspective it's scary the the hydrogel nanotech that they're using in this new vc the luciferase like that name luciferase enzyme mm -hmm. which we actually have some of that particular enzyme in our cerebral spinal fluid and in our bodies right now if you were not aware of that. So like you, cause that's, that's the bio elect, that's the electrical current that we show up on, on a CT scan or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, like, um, okay. like firefly, fireflies, fireflies that glow in the dark, that bioluminescence, that's the yeah. luciferase enzyme. Oh, so, okay. Okay. So that's what, you know, Lucifer was known as the archangel of the, the light bearer. So that's where that came from with the okay. light, the fireflies lighting up. So we actually have some of this in us, but what people don't recognize is this particular hydrogel that is developed by DARPA, which is a branch of our military, our government, by the way, is in the VC and allows the nanotech's little gripper technology to bind to the cell. So you cannot remove it through a heavy metal detox. It's permanently part of you. God is the potter. We are the clay and we are not to mix iron with clay. That's right. Scary. Just That's saying. Scary. 
So, so this nanotech, mm-hmm. they're selling it and, and, and it, like, it's such a great thing because it'll link to your smart device. Your, it'll talk to your phone and tell you what your blood sugar is, what your oxygen saturation is, what your Oklahoma lab work is. Oklahoma has the app for it. Yep. Your driver's yep. license, all that. Well, I was wondering yep. how, how it was able to tell you that because um, my cell phone has automatically comes with an app. Um, where you can you can check your blood pressure and everything. And I was like, how is it doing that through a cell phone? Right now, right I now, turn it off. yep. Right now, we have an an app, a My Health app, where you can you can scan your forehead with your phone right now and check your temperature right That's now crazy. with the devices. It's creepy. So, what? Just what? How does that? Have you guys watched the trailer for um, Songbird? Mm-mm. No, oh, not write, yet. Write that down. In the mo- in the trail in Songbird in the trailer, this is this is where it's like predictive programming, and you're like, oh, oh, oh no, 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 <laughs> this is not happening. They talk about COVID twenty three in the trailer, oh. and yeah, and there it's gonna be three weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be three weeks. It's not mm-hmm. over. It, it's not people like don't they, they're buying into this. Like, if you look up the C the CDC numbers. Oh, let me go grab them it's from two in 2000. They're no, they're almost no different. And what people don't they're realize, too, they're all bogus lies. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, yet, and yet I'm, I'm not discounting, I'm not discounting <laughs> that there, yeah, I'm not discounting that there is a a, a virus or people, I'm not discounting, or I'm not going to say that. I'm not, there's a flu. I, yeah, I'm not discounting that people aren't dying and people aren't getting sick. I'm not discounting that, but well, when you start using getting sick what, because they're getting all hyped up and they're watching their news 24 seven and they can't get their face out of it. The TV. Yep. yep. And that fear and that stress will total. That's the number one thing that will reduce someone's immune system. There's that. And then there's Absolutely. also, and then there's also the fact that um, we are using this technology. Now the new frequencies that they put up of the Cinco cheese, if you know, Cinco cheese, instead of saying, F I V E. I'm G. I'm not gonna. F I V E G. So so what people don't recognize, what people don't recognize, realize is that that fre- those frequencies are two to two hundred gigahertz. Thirty five to sixty gigahertz interferes with the oxygen spectrum. Ah. So inhibiting oxygen to bind to the hemoglobin in your, yeah, it inhibits oxygen to bind to the hemoglobin in your cells in turn, reducing oxygen absorption throughout your body. And people wonder, and that sounds like a CV study that was done last February. People wonder why we're sick or having issues. Um, It's the frequencies of the technology. They've known an example of like that over there, right? Oh, there, I'm not doing it right. I, that that they've known for 30 years that RF EMF destructures the water molecule. An example of that it is this right here, because it rotates the uh, water on its axis and makes things mm-hmm. heat up, right? We are right. 70, we are 73% water. You think that's not a problem? And now we are holding it like, like critical thinking, like has gone out the window. So yeah. there is a group, there is a group called Americans for Responsible Tech.org. You can go to their scientific studies and they show all these scientific studies that show what RF EMF does to the body, causing infertility. So iPads are infertility pads, in my opinion. We don't allow them in our house. You have, it causes infertility, miscarriages, birth defects, um, to Cancer, why is colorectal cancer up 60% this last year? Because you're carrying these things in your back pocket. Yeah. But like people, that's why we have these. Yeah. Uh, so, go ahead, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. I'm just so guided you put, by the you, Holy Spirit you put to bar devices in those huh? like during the day. Like when do you put your devices in those bags? Um, well, for one, we put our devices in the microwave or the bags at night when we sleep. And then what, like today I had it in, in the microwave, my phone was in the microwave till noon. I don't have my device on. We got rid of our Wi-Fi because 
That's another thing too. Yeah. So whenever you're not using your devices, they should not be around you or near you right now because of the, and this is the thing too. In May, there was a study that NIH National Institute of Health where Mr. <coughs> where, where is in charge, right? Uh -huh. they, it was a study that was put up and was up for four weeks before it was withdrawn. And the study was based on, they were trying to figure out the rash that people were getting from the CV vi virus that, um, anyway, so it was a dermatological study with us, I think Russia and Switzerland or New Zealand, UK, whatever, peer reviewed study done. And the title of the study is FIVE. G technology and induction of Corona virus <laughs> in, in skin cells. So um, that, that this study discusses how the elect, we have electrons in our DNA and it, it the, this, the first particular frequencies were causing that RNA to shed. So what people don't recognize is that they they never isolated this CV. They never isolated in the lab and attempted to reinfect a specimen to prove it was infectious. Okay, if you go to the WHO uh -huh. um, website and look up the RT PCR test and look up the seek the COVID nineteen base pairs sequence that they're running for the test, the sequence is identical to chromosome eight in the human genome. So they are just testing to see if we're shedding. So what people don't, re okay, so um, RNA, our, the viruses are bits, bits and pieces of our RNA. So we, okay. are shed we are shedding the RNA from exposure to a toxin chemical radiation because if you really if you look up the symptoms of radiation poisoning it's kind of the same to say in <laughs> so at the same time all this technology was put out everybody started getting sick and people don't recognize oh march things went bad march 23rd 2020 the united states space force launched six satellites into orbit um in the name of security, whatever, and all, it, and and they apply for licensure with the FCC. And now it's on six G. People don't realize six G is in terawatts and interferes with your brain waves. You think yeah. people are crazy now? Just wait. Like yeah. people. So just a lot of information, and so we, as far, so I, it, people that are more sensitive, people on the spectrum are more sensitive mm -hmm. to these frequencies. And so we have to detox more. Like I have, I found out that I have a MTHFR gene mutation. So I have, I don't metabolize folic acid appropriately. And then it's more difficult for me to detox from toxins. So that's why I really need to focus on it. So like my sister-in-law, um, both of my sister-in-laws, my one is the speech pathologist. Mm -hmm. Um, she suggested, they suggested TRS spray, TRS, um, it's a nano zeolite spray. It, it is, it's a nano zeolite that's manufactured in a lab, but it's at zeolites are actually, um, from volcanic ash. What nano zeolites are is like, um, negatively charged ions that are encased in water, mo water molecules that are able to bypass the blood brain barrier and it and it, uh, um, magnetically attracts the positively charged ions of aluminum, mercury, uh, cadmium, fluoride, and um, other toxins in your brain. And then you, f it, if you flush them out with pro the process of elimination, like uh, urine in your feces, mostly urine. So we started doing that. Our, our mood, everybody in the fan, the first three, four days, you'll have mood swings of, you know, cause you're like reopening the neurosynapses and everything's connecting in your brain and everything. But after like a week, we were getting along better in the house. Everybody was in a good mood. The meltdowns were better with, you know, the hit, you know, Mason hitting himself mm -hmm. and everything. It was huge. That's so awesome. pe pe people started, it's not FDA approved, but people are using it and turning to it in the autism community, people that have vaccine VC injuries, because it's, 
it's detoxing from those heavy metals. There, is, I, there was a story that was posted the other day of a four-year-old who has seizure, seizures 24 hours a day on two kinds of medication and having seizures, seizures since she received her 12-month VCs. And she started a TRS spray within six weeks. She's seizure-free. Wow. After being, having wow. seizures all day long, she's seizure free and she's al almost completely off her seizure medication and just using the spray. It, because so it's expensive though. It's like a hundred dollars, 78 to a hundred dollars a bottle. And then you get 140 sprays in one bottle. It's expensive or you can sign up for a sub. You can sign up for a subscription and get it for $50 a bottle, but then okay. you're getting three, you're getting three bottles a month. And then, um, it, so you're sp spending 150, it's $150 a month then for this treatment, but mm -hmm. people swear by it. There was a nine year old girl. There's all these stories. I'm reading a nine year old girl who was nonverbal her entire life. Two weeks after starting this, she started talking. Wow. Yeah. So this That's is huge. Awesome. So I need to do mm -hmm. a video on stuff that how to stay healthy in our new world. Like people, yeah. just, E, 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 all in the name of geoengineering, we have the plane farts, you know, there's the heavy metals in the plane farts, aluminum, barium, strontium, and even lithium. And you know what lithium, lithium is used to make people catatonic oh. and bipolar. That's and it's being sprayed in the, in, in the plane farts, just because yeah, just, uh, uh, what goes up must come down and it ends up in yeah. us. It's right, called... Yeah. Oh, it's it's called TRS spray. TRS spray. Let me see if I have. Uh, and I just want to address Patty's comment. Um, you know, that was a general comment, Patty. Of course, there's people getting sick that don't watch media. Um, but, you know, to me, we're in flu season. Yeah. And. Um, the psychosomatic part of it all is powerful. And, uh, oh, that's a pretty good sized bottle. What is it? Two ounces or how many ounces is that? I'm looking 28 milliliters. Oh, milliliters. Oh, hey, okay. Lori. So, you know, I mean, of course there's people getting sick and, and, um, I don't discount that. Well, no, and then I, dis you, I discount what the government tells us. Yes. Oh, yeah. If you, if I you mean, all of a sudden they're going to start telling us the truth and we're just going to bend over and believe it. I, I, I think don't buy it. And that's my opinion. It's because you I have discernment. Too long to fall into that. You have discernment yeah. through the Holy Spirit and you haven't been, you were, you're an older generation, whereas like my dad, you're, my dad's the generation below you. It's the 50 age. 50 to 60 that are just so glued to the television because that's what they were grown up to. And that's yes, what, and, and they believe everything that comes yeah. out of that. I yes. posted on my Facebook, the patent for television programming and how it affects the brain waves uh -huh. specific, from a medical standpoint, I posted the patent for it. So they are controlling us with the frequencies of the television and how, it, how they say things and and repeat things over and over and over to and then what people need to know is that yeah it's flu season and whenever there's a flu season we release exosomes which by the way exosomes exosomes Sorry. look ident ex exosomes look identical to viruses under the microscope and exosomes you shed during when things get cold or if you're exposed to something like a toxin mm -hmm. chemical radiation yeah, and you shed those R you, you shed those RNA pieces. <laughs> yeah. So, and then what go to the CDC website, the flu is down. Um, I'm sorry, Brooks, I'm you can the you flu start over? <laughs> Who me? No, twin oh. Brooks. <laughs> he got, oh. he got, they got here late. They're like, can you start over? That was a lot of information. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, she just got here. That's she just got where, here. Where, start over where? <laughs> you have to rewatch the whole thing. Have to re Very yeah, we, um, I don't. We don't watch news in our house. We we don't watch news, and we um, don't. Mm -hmm. no. I, I just I don't do it, and and and. <sighs> yeah, um, the whole VC conversation is very um, high strung and. Um, 
difficult across my family line. Um, we have pro, we have against, and it can get very, it can get ugly really quick. <laughs> yeah. So my husband and I we pretty much stick to what we do. What's right for what we feel right is right for our, our exactly. little, our little homestead here. And, and we are not getting, we're not getting that. We're, we're not, um, we're just not I'm doing not it. As far as the autism that. and what my son and I deal with, um, I'm looking into more natural therapies, um, um, like the gardening. That's why I got into gardening is because my sister Gail um, suggested it. And um, so we're going to be getting into that. And just the move here has been very difficult on me. I have not adjusted well at all um, because I didn't realize how dependent I was on certain things. Um, in a city lifestyle. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's a change. Yeah. Um, and, and I know being in this environment is a lot healthier in a lot of ways, but um, the anxiety part of my disorder kicks in because it's a lot that we're responsible for on this ranch. I've always lived in a very small, let me, my environment has always been very tiny. So like the house we came from was maybe, maybe a thousand square feet. And that's including the garage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My yard, yeah. my yard was very, 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 very tiny. I come from that to 30 acres, two story cabin and a workshop and a barn, and a huge garden in the backyard that I don't know anything about or how to take care of. It's a lot it's a lot of overstimulation and it's a huge responsibility that I was not ready for. Um, and as far as electronics, um, luckily living here, electronics, being on electronics all the time has been a little bit um, of a challenge because um, we don't always get good signal out here, but I, we've always tried to keep our son off the tablet as much as possible and have him that's why he does things with his hands like legos puzzles and um he loves color he's big time into art like his mama and um things like that because i've always known and always thought that sitting in front of electronics all day long it's not it's not healthy yeah. Uh, many reasons, especially at night before you go to oh, bed. We're in a thing. We're in a thing. So, I, I have I'm a question. Sorry. And that's the reason I actually came up. Is have you tried like my our granddaughter is autistic. She's not high, high level, but she's on, like she's my son and her and her mom have shared custody so when she's with her dad she's drugged up 24 7. when she's with my daughter-in-law you know they're more holistic and try to do things more naturally but it's such a battle for them because as soon as they get her level the visits over back home she goes so yeah. my question is have you had success in in your autism with diet changes? Yes, yes I have. Um, my son and I, we're not supposed to be eating gluten and that's been our biggest challenge is getting off of that. Um, uh -huh. That is probably the biggest one we're having an issue with right now is the gluten because the protein in it um, affects um, everything to do with your brain. Um, and, and of course your brain affects your mood, your emotions, and anxieties, things like that. And it definitely affects ADHD. And um, um, also all the preservatives that are in food. You have to be careful with food because it, it can say no preservatives and no additional colorings on the box, but you have to read the label because all the outside label is saying is there's no added preservatives since the time that they boxed it. Yes. It, it, it does not include what the previous factory or person did of the food before it landed into the main distributed yes. factory. Thank you. So processed foods is, is, is something that we try to get totally rid of in our house. Um, and that's why gardening is going to become really important 
is because I'm going to try and make sure that our garden is 100% organic with no fertilizers or pesticides because, because when you're, I mean, everybody is sensitive to some point or another, yeah. but when you have a neurological condition, you're more um, at risk to feel and exhibit those, um, the, those poisons that get into your body. So yes, diet is, diet is so huge, so huge. Um, the You're things gonna do fine in your garden. Just one baby step at so, a time. Yeah. So yeah, diet is huge. Um, my son is on medication, but it's a very, very, very low dose. And on the weekends, he does not take it. Um, I am also on a medication, but it's a very, very, very low dose as well. Um, I'm not against medication. I think there are times when you need to have medication. I am one of those people. I can tell if I, if I'm not on medication, I try to go without medication and do everything holistically. Um, unfortunately it did not work for me. Um, I just have a lot of issues going on. Um, but I mean, a lot of it too, is I never learned, um, healthier coping skills either because I wasn't diagnosed until I was 43. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yes, I do notice a difference in diet. Um, pass processed food, anything in a box. Mm -hmm. No, stay away from everything needs to be made yeah. homemade from scratch. Yeah. So, but I love bread, Jan. <laughs> well, what about the keto bread? And <laughs> yeah, I love bread. Um, I, have, I have, um, yeah, I just started following some of those channels and I do have a gluten-free oat bread that I make. That's, that's pretty good. Um, but it just, it's, 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 it's my, it's the food thing I have. It's, it's the texture and the smell and the taste that, that throws me off. So I, I had real bad liver problems real bad. And, um, I had to totally revamp my diet that, and that's when I lost so much weight that I was telling you about on mm -hmm. my micros channel. Um, Sorry about that. My son was calling. Um, but I found, I, I see, I don't eat it anymore. I, I just eat such little amounts of bread now that I can, I can go ahead and eat regular bread. But mm -hmm. I found a gluten-free bread, and I wish to God I could remember it. And I know it's terrible, but it was so good. It was really, really good. But, you know, it took me, like, probably... 20 loaves to figure out which one I liked. Yeah. And I fed the birds a lot of gluten-free <laughs> bread. <laughs> you you guys can order um grain in bulk, organic grain in bulk. Um gluten or not, or a regular from Azure standard and then yep. you can mill it yourself and you know what I mean? So yeah. that's what we've tr what we are doing. But yeah. <laughs> have you guys heard of Ice Age Farmer? No. Okay, he he talks about what's going on with soybeans and our farmland and everything that's going on in the world of with con other countries and you know the weather and everything and this grand solar minimum and all this stuff going on i would go check out his recent last few videos he okay. discusses we're going to end up seeing some huge i would order grain and and i i, I you know we live out on a farm and my husband yeah. my, my brother-in-law farms my um mother-in-law's my, my husband's family's land and everything so we kind of know what's going on too with farm farming and everything. Um, stock up now. Order your seeds now. Start growing as much stuff as you can. Now we live in zone three. So last year I did. I had oh. two two thousand square foot gardens and I about died. And my husband's going to do a third two thousand square foot garden. And I'm like, but so it's zone three. Yeah. It's hard to grow such a short growing yeah. season. To grow yeah. that much stuff. I thought my growing season was short. I'm five. I'm five B. Yours is yours is a lot shorter than mine. I I'm in North Dakota. I'm three. I'm I'm um three out three and a half hours from the Canadian border. So we're cold. <laughs> 
Yeah. So. Lori, I'm with you. I've got, um, I've got clinical depression. Um, and my depression is, <laughs> my depression's not the sad, I'm not interested in anything kind of depression. Mine's the, the type of depression where I'm aggravated and pissed off 24 hours a day. <laughs> You all look at me no, now. Like, There's no like way. That. Not freehandly <laughs> made. She's laughing all the time. It's because I'm medicated. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, man, I, I can't control my emotions at all. I can be, and um, matter of fact, I was tested for bipolar, um, but I'm not. I'm just, it's just, it's my genes. <laughs> the genes my brother. Whatever yeah, I was raised brother. on. <laughs> So. What did you say, Lori? I said, wear sweats. Wear sweats. <laughs> so I used to be on antidepressants and everything, too, and I got off of my antidepressants. I, that, I haven't been on any antidepressants or um, anxiety medicine for eight years. And then I haven't, I've been off. I was, when I was diagnosed with my connective tissue disease, so because I like my hips dislocate and I dislocate mm -hmm. my shoulder and things like crazy. Um, I, I was on pain medicine, not, I was on something called Belbuca for two years and I've been off of that now for two and a half years. So I don't do anything but like grounding or an occasional um, Motrin for pain, but I got, oh, that's another thing too, with the seasonal depression and stuff like that. Grounding, if you're able to get outside barefoot, and be grounded at least two hours a day will help with depression. Huge. Just being outside barefoot, being grounded with mother nature. It's not going to well, happen during the winter. No, you will not, not here during the summer. Not, not, here, not here either. So if you are like me, you can get something, you can get um, grounding therapy mats, sleep mats and uh -huh. sleep sheets. And they, and it shows that it helps autism. And go to groundingandearthing.com. You can buy these products. And it, it's, they, 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 they state that they say groundingearthing.com, the groundingtherapy.com. Okay. Um, they have uh, pads. You know, like if you've seen TENS units with the little round <laughs> things, you get these pads to put on your hands and stuff. Uh -huh. And it's being used. These grounding mats are being used in schools to, for therapy for kids with autism. So you can get these, you can get um, grounding blankets, grounding sheets for your bed, grounding mats for your bed, and these these electrode things. And if you when you plug it into a grounding out, a grounded outlet in your house, you have to have a grounded outlet. Then it's like you're outside barefoot because it's okay, giving you it's grounding. What's a grounded you know, outlet. What's a grounded outlet? The outlet. Um, is that the outlet that's just in the wall? The outlet that's in the wall with the three prongs. The you three have to have the three prong okay. outlet. Okay. Then it's ground because then it's grounded with if it's just two mm -hmm. prongs. Like we live in a 1930s house, so some of our outlets are not grounded. You know, some of them are, and some of them aren't. Um. So it has most houses nowadays are grounded. The all outlets are grounded. It's they legally have to have all outlets grounded for most houses. But we're in a farmhouse, okay. so not all the outlets are grounded. And you plug it in, so it's like you're barefoot outside when you're coming into contact with the the sheet and the blankets and the the mats and stuff. So they use these in therapy in schools for kids with autism because it calms and relaxes them by grounding your energy. I can so, tell you they do not have that here in the little little uh county that i live in montana they do not have any of this in in any of their special ed um classes much less um the inclusion classes like my son or, my son is is and no yeah. twin brooks i'm not gonna go outside while it's snowing and just sit yeah. in the light. are you kidding me i can't stand extreme cold temperatures and i can't stand extreme hot temperatures i, yeah. I cannot do it <laughs> <laughs> no, so they have that these they have they have these products. They are a little spendy, but they work. They work. I think we'll probably try the blankets because my son and I um we're both like Linus from Peanuts. We both have like over 20 blankets each. Like we are yeah. obsessed with blankets. Yeah. It's ridiculous how many blankets are in this house. <laughs> So. Yeah, so there's there's those options, and it's been sh shown to it, it, you, and then you're decreasing that inflammation. So it 
in your body too, when you're grounded. So then it benefits your digestive system. It benefits your overall health, um, rheumatoid arthritis, um, ever anything inflammatory. Yeah, I have arthro arth arthritis because I have dysplasia. And Lori, I did not choose to move here. I got I got dragged here by my sweet husband that I unfortunately <laughs> love unconditionally. <laughs> Just so you know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know how many people actually choose to go to Montana. <laughs> well, my, my mom's from Montana. I have family in Montana. We've got a lot of people. We got a lot of people moving to the Bitterroot Valley because it's beautiful. <laughs> but they don't stay here during the winter. They're from California. They only come during the summer and then they leave when the winter. <laughs> they go yeah. back to California. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah. I would, I would, uh, I'm in chronic pain 24 hours a day, all day long. I'm in pain all day. So me too. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I have, some, I have something called Ehlers-Danlos syndrome as a connective tissue disease and um, a heart condition POTS. And so that's why I'm extra sensitive to the energy piece that we were talking yeah. about earlier. And it makes a lot of sense. It does. So, so um, if we are, if we're energy and we stay grounded with mother earth, what people don't re realize is that the sun sun's rays hit the magnetosphere, which hit, bounces off and electrons end up in the ground. And when we are grounded, those electrons absorb into our body, like antioxidants through our feet. Okay. And that's what maintains health. If you're grounded with mother earth and yeah, just, Yep. I'm well, doing a one hour version on my shirt. My son loves to be barefoot outside. So, me allowing him to do this now, he'll be so thankful to you. <laughs> have, have me also oh, thankful because you're like, <laughs> to be no, allowed to, to be allowed to be <laughs> outside barefoot. He would, oh my gosh, he's going to eat it up. He, yeah. he, he will eat it up. My, 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 my boy, my boys with autism, they're like, oh, I'm like, they're having a bad day. They go outside and I, they come in like, mommy, we feel so better. Cause we were outside grounding. They're out there just barefoot going. Mm -hmm. And what, <laughs> there, have you guys ever heard of the Schumann resonance? No. What's that? That's the earth's heartbeat. Sh huh. it, so the internal earth heart, the earth, cause earth is alive in frequency. So it, it, they, 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 they have, they have probes all over the earth and they monitor them and talk to each other. And the earth's heartbeat, the earth, the Schumann residence is always roughly around 7.83 Hertz. And, um, it's been spiking up the highest last December, the highest, you, when it gets to like 30 to 60 to 70, you have ringing in your ears because we're frequencies, right? We're all interconnected. And the, the, I find it very interesting. There was a book that I started reading that I'm not done reading yet called the God code. And they've discovered mm -hmm. in the genome of the basic, basic building blocks of human life. I've heard of that book. Oxygen. Oxygen. Yeah. Carbon nitrogen. And yeah. 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 Oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, carbon, nitrogen, and hydrogen Four basic building blocks of life mm -hmm. and humans, plants, animals all across the board they they um were studying the chemistry within each you know those building blocks and mm -hmm. broke the dna down from eat for each of those things from insects animals humans to and plants and everything and they were able in within the dna with the in the chemistry of those building blocks discovered um the hebrew and arabic language and deciphered the Hebrew and Arabic language. Somebody article on this resonance. Good job, thanks, Tinker Tinkerer's wife. Anyways, the um, uh, they they discovered all of us from insects, animals, all biological material that within it says within our DNA code of all genetic of all material says God within eternal. Uh, God eternal within us all. God eternal within us all awesome. is in all of our, from 
insects, animals, plants to us. So we are all interconnected and the frequencies are all interconnected and the frequencies of the technology, the beast system that is this, inter negatively impacts the frequencies of biological material. There are studies of the RF and EMF killing the bees, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, we, what is it doing to us when we're 73% water and it destructures water molecules? <laughs> you know, just yeah. people don't recognize, you know, it's just like propaganda. Yeah. They, it's like they're, yeah. they're being spoon fed and they're not, they're not checking back up on what's being fed to them. They're fact checking. So, hey, Shannon, what's the name of your channel? Homesteading in the Heartland. In the Heartland. Okay. I have to run. I have to go call my son. And it, it has been so much fun. I, I, I think I've learned more in this hour. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to, no, I'm going to watch it again and again. So thank you for <laughs> joining us, Jan. Yeah, thank you, Jan. Have a wonderful day and be blessed. Be you blessed. too. Thank you, Lori. I love you. See you later. She's been running my channel for hours. <laughs> Two days. Yeah. 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 Getting there. <laughs> You're awesome. Love you all. Yeah, I'll be um I'll be ending this in about five minutes. I have to go pick up my son from school. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you for listening to me. I felt guided by the Holy Spirit to dump all that information out because it oh, affects I appreciate us. It. it affects us more, and people are not aware of this stuff that's out there and yes. being having it's, it's that important. medical. Mm -hmm. It is important to get that medical side of stuff too. You know, I mean that's just as important as you know, accepting neurological differences and learning how to connect with people in different ways. You do need to understand the medical side of what causes the, these things and um, how to um, uh, maybe change your lifestyle to help support um, some of your challenges so that they're not as challenging, um, like insomnia, anxiety, depression, um, all those things. And like you said, um, children that are nonverbal that that can all start using their voice um, because they've had that that healing in their brain from all the toxins it's all very very important and everybody has their their sides of what they believe in what they don't believe in but there's some of us that you know don't know these things and need to learn them and want to learn them so I yeah yeah and I went once and being a nurse I left the career because of the whole how the far, big pharma is running everything and there's no rhyme or reason to anything. And so once you see what you've seen, you can't unsee it. Well, <laughs> so you, you know that um, there's nurses that are having to uh, leave their field because they refuse to get the VC. Um, they're they're making it mandatory and they're, they're refusing it. Um, and you can't, you can't, we should all, we all have the freedom to choose what we put in our bodies. We if they can choose. pass bills, yeah, if they can pass bills, you know, saying my body, my choice and terminate uh, full term pregnancies, um, my body, my choice, I don't want some toxic put into me. Oh, the white horse in Revelation. Oh, that's, oh man, you know, it has a crown and a bow. Crown yeah. in Greek is Corona. Oh, interesting. Crown in Greek is Corona. A bow in Greek is toxin, T O X O N. And a bow is like a needle. And then the scorpion sting, like, oh, a man, I could, man. Hmm. The scorpion sting is like a needle back in the first century. It would be a, comparable to a needle. So people saying that this isn't the mark is it so far wrong because the original Greek, I've been studying theology like crazy. So the original Greek translation of the mark actually goes from the shoulder to the fingertips. So this okay. can be considered the mark. Um, Gail says, what do we do if they try to force us to take it? I don't have an answer for that, sis. I really don't. Um, you I don't see how they can get away with forcing us to take anything, honestly. Um, it's going to come to the, it's going to come to the point to remain close and friends with some people that have received it so you can get stuff get them to go to the store for you get them to get things for you because you're not going to have to get, be able to fly you're not going to be able to do anything without taking this and it makes no sense to me if we still have to wear a mask and social distance why would you want to take something when you still have to wear a mask and social distance when 
this survival rate is 99.7% and 94% survival rate for over the age of 70. So why the, the, the common sense is just like, like, what do you do? So it's going to get to the point where you're going to have to just be living on your own, making your own food, growing your own food, canning your own food and, 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 and barter and trade with people amongst yeah. each other. And then if you need certain things, you're going to have to find somebody that has take, has done that, that still survives. Right. Because 30%, 33% in the animal trials, actually in the animal trials, all, it, 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 oh, I, I, it, it, I had a friend, a co former colleague of mine receive it and she had an allergic reaction. Like, I, I, I begged her, don't do it, don't do it. But she felt pressured that she had to do it to work. And I'm like, honey. So people people are smart when they're saying, no, my body, my choice. I, there's, there's, there's no, the, mm, what do we do? You just fire. It's okay. Um, I thought you were subscribed to my channel too. Um, so I don't know why you didn't get the notification, but um, there's a lot of good stuff on here. So definitely replay it when you get a chance. It is yeah. 3 one and I have got to get okay. off here and get Lori? in the truck. Sorry, <laughs> I talk too much. It's okay. <laughs> Thanks, guys, you want my carpet tunnel? <laughs> much Thanks have you guys for being on the panel. Thanks for being on the panel. And um, thank you for my moderators. I appreciate you putting up all those links. That was awesome. Um, I really appreciate you guys. I think this is probably my biggest live I've ever had. <laughs> well, thank you for letting me talk and monopolize the conversation so much. That was a lot of information to the point that I'm going to have to watch my own live over again because I tried to make notes and I just wasn't fast enough. So yeah, it's a lot of information. I'm definitely going to put the God code on my reading list on my, um, on my book app and add that to my reading list. Oh, Hey, I posted a video called DMT spiritual warfare and how the mm -hmm. enemy is attacking God's people. I cover some of this stuff in it. Okay, you go back. And then I connect scripture and describing, you know, Perfect. Um, like Genesis. Go and check that out. Yeah. Definitely check that out. So, all right, guys. Well, this okay. was a very intellectually probed program with lots of good stuff, lots of meat and potatoes to chew on. Um, so definitely, if you missed some of it, go back and replay it. You won't regret it. I know I'm definitely going to have to replay it myself. So <laughs> y'all have a good week. I'll be back on YouTube a little bit later tonight. I've got like two other lives I want to catch tonight. So I'll, you'll see me again, but love okay. y'all. Much bye. love. Bye. Have a wonderful day. You, you too. Bye. Glory dance. One more time. One Peace, more love, time. and light. Peace, <laughs> love, and light. Yes, ma'am. Bye guys. Amen. Bye. <laughs>